So as we continue to solve on this loverly day, I want to collect all my variables, in this case, my trigonometric dealios. So I'm going to do two things in one. I'm going to carry over. I'm going to or add cosine of x to both sides. And I'm also going to subtract the radical. Now I can simplify, combine like terms. Cosine, two cosine x equals negative radical two. Now I divide both sides by two, bloop, bloop. And I get cosine of x equals negative radical two over two. Before we actually write the answers, I do want to point out to you the instructions. Solve for all real numbers. Now, how is that different from our previous one? They're not. The previous problem, we said this, between 0 and 2 pi, but not including 2 pi. Because uh, it limited the number of answers we have. Well, when I solve for all real numbers, there is no limit. That means there are an infinite number of solutions. So how do we write it in that form? Well, one of the answers was, what did you say, 3 pi over 2? Okay, so 3 pi over 4. 3 pi over 4. Now, how do we, do we make this so that every single time, so 3 pi over 4 is over here somewhere. Uh, not that good. So every time we loop around, boink, 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 how do we loop around? Well, what is a single wrap around? 2 pi. So that means we are going to add 2 pi times some number, n. So effectively, we're adding a period. We're saying adding a period with an, an, a variable, because every time you times 1, times 2, times 3, times 4, that's how many loops you do, how many cycles you do. So, And we're going to say the same thing for the other result, 5 pi over 4. And we just say plus 2 pi n. Numero siete. What are we going to do here? Okay, so let's subtract the 2 cotangent, cosine squared, x, minus 2 cotangent of x, now equals 0. Good, so notice that I have a cotan here, eat down being a key. So I am going to factor out the cotangent of x. And when I do that, I get cosine squared of x minus 2. And all equals 0. And our friend, the zero product property, zero product property, says I now have two separate equations. Cotangent of x is 0 and cosine squared of x minus 2 equals 0. So now we ask ourselves, where is the cotangent of x equal to 0? And if you recall, it's going to be top and bottom because that's where tangent is undefined. So that means we have x is going to be pi over 2, Plus, how often does it hit itself? I guess that's a funny question. Notice here. It starts here, but then pi later, it smacks. Pi later, it smacks. Pi later, it smacks. So instead of saying 2 pi n, I just say pi n. Because every half, every half a, um, a cycle, it boom, 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 boom. So that's pi. Okay, now over here, let's uh, solve the next one. Uh, cosine squared equals 2x. Now, uh, let's take the square root. To get cosine of x equals plus or minus ra ra radical 2. As we can see, this is outside of my range. My range for cosine is just uh, 1 to negative 1. So this here would be the null set. It is un to find at that point. Can you just write them to find? Yeah. Or can you do that weird thing? 
All right, so on this problem, let's go ahead and add the 3 to both sides. Then we divide by 4 on both sides. I forgot my squares. Now I'm going to square root both sides. Don't forget the plus or the minus here. Sine of x is equal to plus or minus radical 3 over 2. So on our unit circle, we have x equals pi over 3, and every pi, or 180 degrees, it repeats. And then the other one is 2 pi over 3, and every 180 degrees, or pi, it also repeats. So here are my infinite number of answers written in two different ways. In this case, what I can do is just put a new variable right here. Call it u, call it a, whatever. So just by, for definition, let me solve for something more simple like this. Sine of a equals negative one half. Now, once I've solved that, I can substitute the a back in, the 2x, and then solve the new situation. So what values of um, a will give me negative one half? So one result would be a is 7 pi over 6. And of course, it says for all real numbers. So that loops around every um, 2 pi. And then the other one is 11 pi over 6. And that loops around also. Now what do we do? Well, we already know what a is. It's 2x. So I'm going to substitute that back in. Erase this, put a 2x. Erase and replace. So how do I get x by itself? Divide by? So when I divide everything over here by 2, the same thing over there, notice that this 6 becomes a 12 downstairs. The 6 here and here become 12s. And the 2 pi and the 2 pi, the 2s drop out in those two cases. So x equals 7 pi over 12 plus pi over, or pi n, and then the other one is 11 pi over 12 plus pi n. Uh, number 10, let's define a or u as our uh, x over 2. So now I have tangent of a minus 1 equals 0, Tangent of A equals 1. So according to our unit circle, A is going to be pi over 4. And every pi, or 180 degrees, we end up repeating the answer. So now I have to substitute back in. So this here, I'm going to substitute X over 2, which means I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. And my final result will be x equals pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. Now let's look at number 11. Let's call 2x a. So a equals 2x. So now I have the cosine of a is equal to negative 1. And the only place that a satisfies that, will be at pi. So, of course, that happens every 2 pi. And now I'm going to substitute in 2x equals pi plus 2 pi n. Now divide by 2 all across the board. And x is going to be pi over 2 plus pi n. And finally, let's substitute here. So a is 4x. So secant of a is equal to 2. Now I'm going to take the reciprocal of both sides to get the cosine a is equal to 1 half. And I have two possible situations. a can be pi over 3, and that happens every period, and a could also be 5 pi over 3, happening every period. 
Now we substitute back in 4x equals pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. 4x equals 5 pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. Divide everything by 4 to get pi over 12 plus pi over 2n. And the same thing happens over here. 5 pi over 12 plus pi over 2n. And there you go. Your final result. Have fun.